equipment safety understanding your equipment before purchase check the design qualifications and footprint check safety features in both electrical and mechanical aspects equipment design that includes advanced safety features such as audible visible signals when the equipment is operating interlock or key lock systems permanent shielding etc should be considered whenever possible equipment calibration and maintenance for its optimal performance and potential for accidental worker exposure review the manufacturer's documentation and keep it for future reference use and service the equipment according to the manufacturer's instructions ensure that the user is trained in the setup use and maintenance of his equipment let us discuss a few select equipment used commonly in a laboratory automated analyzers risk of operator injury if all doors covers and panels are not closed and secured in place prior to and during instrument operation the integrity of safety interlocks and sensors is compromised instrument alarms and error messages are not acknowledged and acted upon handling moving parts mishandling of broken parts doors covers and panels are not opened closed removed and or replaced with care improper tools are used for troubleshooting to avoid injury keep doors covers and panels closed and secured in place while the instrument is in use take full advantage of the safety features of the instrument do not defeat safety interlocks and sensors acknowledge and act upon instrument alarms and error messages keep away from moving parts report any broken parts to your technical support team open or remove and close or replace doors covers and panels with care use the proper tools when troubleshooting refrigerators and freezers Refrigerators and freezers should be defrosted and cleaned periodically and any ampules and tubes that have broken during storage are removed. Face protection and heavy duty rubber gloves should be worn during cleaning. After cleaning the inner surface of the cabinet should be disinfected. All containers stored in refrigerators and freezers should be clearly labeled with the scientific name of the contents, the date stored and the name of the individual who stored them. Unlabeled and obsolete materials should be autoclaved and discarded. An inventory must be maintained of the freezer's contents. Flammable solutions must not be stored in the refrigerator. Storage of ampules containing infectious materials. They should never be immersed in liquid nitrogen because cracked or imperfectly sealed ampules may break or explode on removal. Infectious materials should be stored in mechanical deep freeze cabinets or on dry ice. Laboratory staff should wear eye and hand protection when removing ampules from cold storage. The outer surfaces of ampules should be disinfected when the ampules are removed from storage. Pipetting aids. A pipetting aid must always be used for pipetting procedures. Mouth pipetting must be strictly forbidden. The importance of pipetting aids cannot be overemphasized. The most common hazards associated with pipetting procedures are the result of mouth suction. Oral aspiration and ingestion of hazardous materials have been responsible for many laboratory associated infections. Pathogens can also be transferred to the mouth if a contaminated finger is placed on the suction end of a pipette. A lesser known hazard of mouth pipetting is the inhalation of aerosols caused by suction. Aerosols can also be generated when a liquid is dropped from a pipette onto a work surface when cultures are mixed by pipette and when the last drop is blown out of a pipette. The inhalation of aerosols unavoidably generated during pipetting operations can be prevented by working in a biological safety cabinet. Pipetting aids should be selected with care. Their design and use should not create an additional infectious hazard and they should be easy to sterilize and clean. Plugged aerosol resistant pipette tips should be used when manipulating microorganisms and cell cultures. 
pipettes with cracked or chipped suction ends should not be used as they damage the seating seals of pipetting aids and so create a hazard. Disposable transfer loops The advantage of disposable transfer loops is that they do not have to be sterilized and can therefore be used in biological safety cabinets where Bunsen burners and micro incinerators would disturb the airflow. These loops should be placed in disinfectant after use and discarded as contaminated waste. Micro incinerators Gas and electrically heated micro incinerators have borosilicate glass or ceramic shields that minimize the spatter and dispersal of infected material when transfer loops are sterilized. However, micro incinerators can disturb the airflow and should therefore be placed towards the back of the work surface in biological safety cabinets. Laser enabled equipment Many equipments use laser enabled mechanisms, example, barcode readers, five part cell counters. General laser safety warnings Use of controls or adjustments or performance of procedures other than those authorized may result in hazardous radiation exposure. Do not attempt to remove the laser or to open it. If removal is required, it must be done only by your technical support team. To ensure safety, lasers are covered with protective shields held in place by tamper-proof screws. Do not attempt to remove these shields as it contains components dangerous to the operator. Ultraviolet safety Some equipment can generate concentrated UV radiation in all the spectral regions that, if used without the appropriate shielding and personal protective equipment, can cause injury with only a few seconds of exposure. There are several sources of UV radiation in the laboratory, including germicidal lamps in biological safety cabinets, nucleic acid transillumination boxes, nucleic acid cross-linkers and UV lasers. An unfortunate property of UV radiation is that there are no immediate warning symptoms to indicate overexposure. Symptoms of overexposure including varying degrees of erythema, photokeratitis, welder's flash typically appear hours after exposure has occurred. Special work practices, equipment hazard labeling, use of PPE and training are required to avoid the hazards. Never work in a biological safety cabinet while the germicidal lamp is on. If possible, close the sash while lamp is on. Many overexposures to UV radiation have occurred because of individuals not knowing the hazards associated with the UV emitting equipment. To help prevent eye and skin injuries, any equipment that emits UV radiation must be conspicuously labelled with a caution label. Microtomes A microtome blade is extremely sharp and must be handled carefully. The rotary handle of the microtome must always be set in the locked position when changing a paraffin block or the blade. New blades should be placed in the blade holder and clamped before the rotary wheel lock is released. Wrist guards should be added where possible. Once the blade is seated and secured, the rotary wheel lock can be released and the knife and holder advance to the specimen block. If adjustments need to be made to the specimen, remove the blade from the housing. Removal of the blade Cut resistant gloves must be used when removing and sharpening the blade. Microtome cleaning Before the microtome is cleaned, the rotary wheel must be locked and the blade removed from the blade holder. Use caution as other components of the microtome may also have sharp edges. Cut resistant gloves must be worn under nitrile gloves when a microtome is being cleaned. For more details on equipment safety, please refer to the training module on facility management and safety.